El Salvador, the world capital of violent crime and murder, a country overrun by criminal gangs, which ironically originated on the streets of Los Angeles. 25 years ago, they were deported from the U.S. to El Salvador, where they quickly multiplied, fed by poverty, lack of opportunities, and weak institutions. Now they control large parts of the country. 17 repentant gang members, most straight out of prison, live in this rehabilitation house. Carlos, who tried twice unsuccessfully to join his family in the U.S., insists that he too is a victim. I was left alone at age 13. I needed my family but couldn't join them. I felt alone, so I sought refuge in a gang. What if more Salvadorans are deported, I ask him. What will happen? The violence will increase because they are deporting people who belong to gangs or who need work, and there's no work here. The front yard of this church in San Salvador, sandwiched in between the territories of two warring rival gangs, is the closest thing to a sanctuary, a place where residents can eat, laugh, and play in relative safety. During Mass, Father Mauro Verseletti is unafraid to preach against evil, represented these days, he says, by the President of the United States. La sangria que va a implementar Donald Trump. Donald Trump is bleeding El Salvador with his massive deportations because many people whose lives are threatened will die. And it's not just the threat of violence. Millions of Salvadorans make less than $5 a day working the fields or in the informal economy. So many survive on remittances from relatives in the United States, money that would stop flowing with mass deportations. It's a vicious circle. Poverty, crime, and families torn apart. A movie El Salvador has seen before and had hoped would never see again. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, San Salvador.